Good day guys, welcome to Rumble's Fish Room. So today, um, I've still got a lot of camping prep to do. My idea is to try and have my camping prep finished by the Saturday the 15th, I think it is. So that way, next week, I don't have to work, I don't have to stress. Um, and then I can load up by the 20th or whatever it is. No, is it the 21st? the Thursday night. So basically I just want to do all my prep at least one week in advance. So if I need to buy stuff over the weekend, um, I can, and I'm sure you guys know it's no fun doing everything at the last minute, but anyway, that's not the point. So, so for the next couple of videos, I think I'm going to do a couple of cichlid profiles. Um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, cichlid profiling. It's not my idea. Other channels have done it, but, um, I, I want to talk about, I'm not going to talk about how to look after the fish. I want to talk about my fish that I own, characteristics of them, their behavior, all that sort of thing. Uh, and I want to start with one of my favorites. Um, and I say one of my favorites, it's only been short term that they've become one of my favorites. And one of the reasons they are in my favorites is because you guys comment on them. And, um, it's cool that I've never talked about them much in the videos and um, you guys are commenting about them so they're catching your eye in the videos. <clears throat> uh, I've lost my telephone. And then, so basically the plan is we're going to do a cichlid profile, maybe like, it's only going to be three, four minutes just so you guys can get a bit of a um, fish hit so the channel is still about fish. Uh. I think it's in my car, guys. So, um, so you still get your fish hit, and then I'm gonna go through the camping stuff. So kind of like I did the motorbike videos a, a couple of weeks ago or a month ago or something. How I um, yep, phone's in the car. <clears throat> how I talked about the fish room, and then I went out and worked on the motorbike. How's the microphone going, guys? Can you hear the wind? Drop a comment below if you can. Anyway, I'll see you in the fish room. Alright guys, so I'm trying to film a clip. The stingray wants to be the star of the show splashing around. Uh, but anyway, check it out guys. Just a bit of a flex on my lighting system. I can turn the half of the room off and look, we can look at the fish without glare on the tank. All right, so if you didn't guess, we're talking about Nibachromus polystigma. Um, these are fast turned into one of my favorites. Uh, so basically we've got the two boys just there and then there's four or five girls. One, pro one thing is, the tank's not very well lit, so you'll have to bear with the light, guys. And also the glass is dirty. I should have cleaned it before I made this clip. Um, so, basically, these are the craziest fish I've got. Um, like, when I walk in the room, as soon as I open the door, they're splashing. And this tank's actually got full lids on it, but the water flies out of the feeder hole. That's how crazy they are. Um... They're very, they're quite aggressive. I wouldn't say very aggressive. They don't kill the girls, but they smash them. And um, the, I've actually put the Bacchromus um, rhodesii girl in there because she's, she was actually way bigger than the males, but they're bigger, than, they're the same size as her now. And she was to spread the aggression and um, it worked mint. Basically, the, all the tails grew back on the females, ta on the females when I put that girl in there. And if you watch them, I don't know if it will happen now because I'm standing here, but she actually is the boss. Um, she, she tells the boys who's the boss. Uh, how could we get... I don't think I can really bring the light across more. Yeah, it doesn't really make much difference, does it, guys? But, like, he's gorgeous. And like, they're not the brightest fish I have, but come back under the light, buddy. They're, the, they're probably the most active fish I have. 
I mean, like, besides the flower horns, the flower horns are basically water dogs, the way they flip around and stuff. But he's got he's actually got a bit of a torn tail. I don't know if it, I don't think it would be Finra. I think it's this girl attacking him. But um, yeah, I could maybe think about taking her out now, but I don't want to disrupt the the colony. And also, I've got nowhere else to put her. So whatever works works, you know. I, this this is the Buckachroma girl that never bred for me. Not once did I ever get a mouthful from her. Um, I'm not really sure why. You can see she's pretty skinny. Problem with Buckachromas, they're very hard to keep um, well nourished. Um, my colony, I had to feed the hell out of them to keep them full. And I don't want to overfeed the polystigma just to get the Buckachromas nice and full, if that makes sense. Um, and I love the girls. They look like a rock. They're so cool. I guess maybe like one thing I could have done is uh, clean the glass. So guys, if you can't tell, this week is a bit of a hectic one for me. It's kind of why I'm doing the cichlid profiles. So it's just a nice easy vid. Um, basically, I think it's it's a video that keeps you guys interested without me having to make something and like. You guys know I'm always making filters and all that sort of jazz. So um, basically I'm just having a bit of a break from that. Obviously, let's put turn the lights back on. Obviously we do need to get stuck into it. That filter up in this tank is working, is doing the job, but th these two tanks still only have one sponge filter in it. That one's only got two fish in it. That one actually has no fish in it now. Um, but we'll get some fish in it one day. All right, guys, now that we've had a look at the pollies, um, let's have a look at the trailer. So, so for those of you who haven't seen, this is uh, like a flatbed single axle. It's got brakes. Um, I don't really know what it's weight rated for. We're, basically, we're putting close to 500 kilos on it, I think, roughly. That's probably an over-exaggeration, just under 500. Um, so basically it used to have a canopy on it, but the canopy tore. Um, so I still wanted to use the frame and I've put my rooftop tent up there with a series of bolts and pipes and I still want to make one more um, brace up here. I've actually cut the brace, but I, I've just got to put some rubber on it at work so it doesn't wreck the bottom of that. Um, and then the, bike, the quad bikes didn't fit under that bar there. so. I actually spaced the frame up. You're not really going to be able to see. Oh, there you go. So I've got 100 mil steel blocks underneath all the bolts, and I've got like 150 mil bolts bolting that down. Um, it's solid as. It's not going anywhere. <coughs> um, when the vans are rocking, don't come and knocking. In this case, the trailer. So basically, today, this frame here is actually my bike carrier for the car. You'll see that, see the tow hitch there. Um, but this is actually just sitting there. So we basically need to put that on today. Um, I, I really need to get it nice and close up this end because it should be all right. I'm worried about my car jack knifing on that, but I, th I, I think I think that might be lower than my, my bumper. I don't know. I'm just going to YOLO it, put it on. If it is going to get in the way, we're just going to have to be, we're just going to have to think about it because there's not really any other option at this stage. I, I can't just, I can't take that off like it's welded on. So that hitting the back there is our limitation. And also, um, basically we need to be able to get a strap on that. So anyway, I got I got to take this top piece off to bolt the bottom piece down and of course it starts raining when I want to work on the trailer. Alright, so I've taken the top piece off which um, if any of you guys are OGs you'll actually know that this is the rack that I made for the pit bike and I just threw that on top of it for my big bike because I didn't see the point in making a whole new one. So this hole needs to be 
kind of on the edge of this. So we can, I can pre-drill the top couple of layers, but the bottom layer, I'm probably just going to have to drill, well, how loud is that in the camera? The bottom layers, I'm probably just going to have to drill with the big drill bit because the little drill bit isn't going to be long enough to go through it, you know. So if we drill this like this, and then we need to swap drill bits. Always drill with the smaller bit first. Makes life easy. All right, so it's not actually that dark, but my camera's designed to be a poo. So these are like the flush mount bolts with like the little square bit underneath. Um, I've drilled that top hole a bit bigger I've got no idea if this is going to work, but I'm going to try and hit them in. No. It's kind of making a mark. I might have to drill that top hole just that little bit bigger. <clears throat> Alright guys, I drilled a bigger hole in the top, just the top, and I uh, got them through. Uh, it's live action here guys. If I something doesn't work for me I don't hide it and uh, I was pretty clear that what I just did didn't work so we fixed it now um, I just got to bolt it up the only problem is this isn't gonna whoops that's undoing it's only gonna get us so far I'm gonna have to do it by hand I haven't I don't like doing nuts up by hand but uh, if anything this top tops a bit too loose now um basically like as the 13 mil pulled through i tried not to let it pull right through so it left the burr, burr there so that way it spin it doesn't spin at the top if you know what i mean it should work it should work fingers crossed i don't think it'll come loose either way um Missing a nut. Oh, it's up here. <sighs> anyway, I'm going to finish bolting this and I'll get back to it with the next part. Alright guys, so I don't actually have any proper panel beating tools here. I could take this to the father-in-law's workshop, but I didn't really see the point for such a little job. But I folded the edge over there. That's the worst one. I couldn't get in that corner. And I just used a normal hammer. This is actually bent in. There we go. And um, it's not easy. This hammer's made for wood, not metal. Um, but anyway, this can go back on. I'm not even going to worry about painting the raw material. It's already completely rusting inside. So I'm not really prolonging anything by throwing paint on it. It'll literally just be for looks. So the, we line this back up. Um, then I've got to feed the fish after I finish this. And then I might even come back out after dinner and work on the motorbike. Whew. I'm puffed out, guys. Not that I'm unfit. I've been smashing the gym. Um, I'm probably the fittest I've been in eight or so years um but that was hard work i don't even have a gimpy here the only thing i've got is like uh, a block splitter and that was just way too big for what i was doing but for any of you who don't know why i did it basically i didn't want that raw cut edge uh with my wheel going on it so I put the, I cut it with eight, eight to ten mil overhang, and then I, um, and then I folded that under so that way there's no burrs for my 
uh, wheel to catch on so the rubber doesn't get wrecked. Um, I am thinking about getting new tires for my bike. If, if I get new tires, I'll probably glue some um, old, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Like petrol hose, fuel, fuel line, rubber on there. Um, anyway, we need to go inside and get some spring washers. The ramp is on. So at this stage the trailer is pretty much complete. There's um there's four spring washers which I might change out off camera. I used M12 spring washers. I needed M10 and um it actually blew them out, which I kind I kind of knew was going to happen. But trailer's pretty much ready now. Uh, so I just knocked my microphone fitting out. I wonder if you guys had audio in that last clip. You'll either have audio or you'll have a voiceover, one of the two. But anyway, let me know what you think of the camping gear. Um, if you think I should make any changes, like let me know. Uh, I am a little bit worried about how much the tent shakes. So what I'm thinking about doing is once the bikes come off the trailer um, on the campsite, is actually ratchet strapping diagonally two ratchet straps across the trailer and that way it'll stop the it'll stop the it will stop the tent from swaying um i've got no worry about the strength holding it like there's where there's only there's two of us sleeping up there the tent's only about 40 kilos definitely not worried about the weight just um a bit of stability when i'm sleeping you know <laughs> but anyway guys if you like this video give a thumbs up if you want to sub, 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 subscribe for more, hit that little red button. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.